talk about what's best for me. Yeah, yeah of course we have. No? Did anyone even consider asking me to be part of a conversation about my well-being? Oh, well, we didn't uh, sort of. Just in case you don't realize, I'm not dead. This is my funeral we're talking about here, yet. Don't you think I deserve to be part of a discussion about my life, my future, where I should live? Mom, you're, you're, you're not thinking this through. No, I'm not thinking this through. I've just found out I haven't had a chance to think this through. You, on the other hand, have plenty of time to think it through and talk about it behind my back. <coughs> get out! All of you, get out of my house! Well, just as long as you know that there's absolutely no way you can move in with us, Helen. You've said enough. Get out while you still can on your own two legs. Oh, don't you get out. No, we're leaving. Are you going to let her speak to me like that? No, that's why we're leaving. <laughs> Mom, what part of get out don't you understand, Karen? This is so screwed up. No backbone. That's your problem. No backbone. Wait, you want backbone? Shut the hell up! Okay, officer, thank you. Yeah, I will. I'll let them know. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Anything? Uh, no, he said that they, uh, they put out an APB on her to let the other officers know to keep an eye out for her. Where would she go, Mike? Where would she be? Uh, you know, don't worry about her, Karen. You know what? I I'll bet she's just gone for a walk. She'll be fine. Well, she's been gone for over 10 hours. Did anyone check the old well behind the barn? <laughs> well, I saw this movie once. She's not Just down the well, Margaret. Mike, you better go take another look around. I've been out there five times already, Karen. But did you check the well? <laughs> if you have any more brilliant ideas, would you keep them to yourself, please? <laughs>
standing there staring at me. I'm not going to escape if that's what you think. We were very worried about you. Well, I'm back now. You can go back to worrying about yourself. Oh, well, Mom, that's not fair. We had no idea where you were, and anything could have happened I to you. I don't know what all the fuss is about. I went for a walk. That's it, a walk. I needed to think. And I do my best thinking when I walk. Despite what you all think, I'm perfectly capable of looking after well, myself. Well, you're so capable. No, 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 wait a minute, Karen. This isn't getting us anywhere. Mom, it's after midnight. You've been gone all day, and we're worried about you. I know this farm like the back of my hand. I ought to. I've worked on it for more than 50 years. I'm sorry if I scared you. I, I didn't mean to. Well, you should be sorry, Mom, after what you, the way you reacted this I morning. I said I was sorry for scaring you. I didn't say I was sorry for what was said this morning. If anyone should be sorry for what was said this morning, it's you three. Me? I didn't even think you should sell the farm, and, and I flew all this way uh, just to find out. You're right. I mean, she's right, Karen. You know what? We never included her in any of our discussions about where she was going to live. That was wrong of us. I apologize for that, Mum. We didn't mean anything bad by it. Apology accepted. Look, Michael, I have a question for you. Do you want the farm? What? You heard me. Do you want the farm? No! <laughs> you don't, do you, Mike? Oh, I don't know. I mean, maybe we could think Well, if you it. want it, it's yours. Your father always hoped you'd take it over and keep it in the family. Are you saying he can have the farm for free? Well, I certainly wouldn't expect my own son to buy it off me, now would I? Oh, I don't think that's fair. Well, right? do you want it then? Because if I you want to go right ahead, it's all well, yours. Of course I don't want it. I have a home in Edmonton. I have a life in Edmonton. That's why I offered it to Michael. He doesn't have a life in Edmonton. <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't have a life, period. Excuse me? Well, I don't understand why he gets offered the farm like that, and, and I'm an equal part of this family, but too. he's here and you're there, love. So I'm being punished because I moved away? I'm being disinherited because I chose a better life for myself? Nobody's punishing you, love. I just decided that the best well, thing I, I think that when we have a decision to make that involves everyone, we should make it together. <laughs> oh, Mom, this is different. We we were thinking of your well-being and and you're talking about giving Michael my part of the inheritance. Michael can always take out a mortgage on the farm and give you your share. Uh, hello. Oh, no, <laughs> People stop talking about me like I'm not here. Find a very nice waterfront home on the lake, which we are to take possession of one month from today. You haven't moved into it yet. You can always get out of it if you really wanted to. But we don't really want it's to. It's a silly idea anyway, living in a cottage when there's a perfectly good farm here that's been in the been in the family since the 40s. Yes, and that's the last time any improvements was done to Oh, it. how do you know this place may be old? But it's in excellent shape. Michael! No! No, we don't want to live here, Mum. We can't live here. God, I, I couldn't live here. We're going to live on the lake. That's what we've decided to do, and that's what we dreamed about doing. We're going to do that. Well, I think that's a very good idea, Mum. <laughs> you know, you're going to need the money from the sale of the farm. Willow's Bend is nice, but it's expensive. All right, I just thought I'd ask. I'll sell it. Well, I, I guess the next question How is... How long do I have? <laughs> Before I have to move. Oh. How long do I have? Well, how long do you need? The doctor said there's a apartment waiting for you any time at the Weeping Willows. Willows, then. No, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to decide right now, Mom. You can wait a few weeks if you want. No, I've made up my mind. It's no good putting off the inevitable. What has to be, has to be paying your taxes. <laughs> and death. <laughs> Mom, are, are you sure about this? No, but I'm as sure as I can be for now. Well, I've got 50 years of my life to get packed and sorted. I better start right away. 
Now, Michael, you go upstairs to your old room and bring down that old trunk. Mom, it's after midnight. You don't want to start on this now. Oh, I couldn't sleep if I tried. And if the trunk's down here, I can start puttering about first thing in the morning. <laughs> okay, Mike, come on, I'll give you a hand. No, it's likely got a lot of stuff in it already. <coughs> oh, and what can I do? Oh, I don't know. Um, oh, maybe you could try talking to George for a while. <laughs> about their own mother, they might not think her so perfect. Keep your <laughs> voice down, George! That's got you back, George, Paddling has it. That's taken you down a peg or two. I know, I know. Let's get them up. Let's drag them out of their warm beds and magical dreams and tell them what their mother did. Let's tell them a few home truths. Hey, kids! Kids! choice have we got, Karen? I'm just doing exactly what the doctor told me to do. Poor mom. Oh, Marga called. I told her what happened, and so she's on her way over here. What's that all about? <coughs> I have never seen her so upset like that before, Karen. Oh, well, sure you have. You've just got a short memory. You've got to remember some of those fights that uh, she and Dad used to have when we were kids. Yeah, yeah, I do remember. You know, I must have blocked those out. They were horrible fights. Yeah, mostly about Dad's drinking. <laughs> and I used to come to your room and you'd tell me stories to calm me down, remember? You used to be so scared. And I think that's why you get panic attacks now. Had panic attacks. Okay. I don't have them anymore. Okay, I'm sorry. It wasn't a criticism. It's just that, you know, I... I don't understand it. Things were a lot really tense around here when we were young. And that's why I find it so incredible that she keeps bringing Dad back into her life. It's almost as if she has some unfinished business with him. Yeah, I wonder why she kept on saying she was sorry. You know what, the way, the way he used to treat her when he was drinking, he's the one who should be sorry. But it stopped, didn't it? The drinking. You know, one day he was drinking and then the next... Yeah, that's when he got sick. I never talked to him, you know? Well, of course you No, did. no, no, not, not really. Not even after the drinking stopped. I never really had a conversation with him. Oh, I'd say, you know, hello, nice day, or, how are you doing? But I never really had a conversation, no more than about five words in a row. And I don't ever remember looking into his eyes. I didn't know him, he didn't know me. 
Well, I didn't really know him either. Wow, come on now, you were his little princess. Oh, I know he loved me, I never doubted that. But I didn't really know him. He used to disappear for weeks on end. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. And poor mum, she never knew if or when he was coming home. Where'd he go? <laughs> mum said he was a nomad at heart. He had to get away. She always <coughs> protected him. You know, but I used to blame myself. I used to think there was something I had done that drove him away. I hated him being gone. Yeah, oh, I liked it. And the shouting stopped when he was gone. Now he's gone forever, but the shouting lingers. And you know what, that's why I know the best thing is to get Mom out of this place and into somewhere new where she can be looked after as quickly as possible. Well, I phoned Gerald and I told him I'm gonna stay for a few more days. Good. Is she dead? <laughs> no. Well, Karen said she'd gone to the hospital. She had a turn, she's in the hospital, but she's fine. Oh, what did the doctor say? Well, not a lot, really. He took her blood pressure and he said it was a little high, but nothing really out of the ordinary. He said her heartbeat was strong, her breathing was normal. He said that they uh, talked about uh, moving out and she seemed quite content to do it, yeah. Good. And then they got onto the subject <coughs> of dad. And he said she told him something that might explain some of her behavior. Uh, so she's still having a hard time over dad's death. No, it's more the way he died. She blames herself for it. Well, Dad was sick. No, no, Why she would she? She told the doctor she killed him. What? No. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> well, not for sure. At all, really. But well, what on earth are you talking about? No, 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 wait a second. See, no, what the doctor meant was that it's a typical reaction for somebody in Mum's position like that is the caregiver. They often blame themselves when the patient dies. Dad had a really serious stroke, and Mum knew eventually he was going to die. Doctor said that that sort of thing runs really deep, that kind of blame. So it's probably why she has a hard time letting go, why she sort of keeps him around in her own little way. Well, so what you're saying is she didn't actually kill Dad. No, of course not. Well, the autopsy was. No, there's no autopsy. <laughs> there. Dad was a sick elderly man who died from his illness. Autopsies are rarely conducted in circumstances like that. Well, maybe there should have been. Just to be sure. Oh, honestly, Margaret. Okay, well, the big question now is where does she go from here? And I know she wouldn't settle for moving in with me even if there was room. And I wouldn't want to be looking over my shoulder all the time to see what she was doing, especially after her confession. Margaret. <laughs> right, I'll shut up now. All right, well, listen, the doctor checked her over. He said physically she's doing fine. He said give her a few months and mentally she'll be right as rain too. So we'll go around, we'll get her settled in, and then we'll come back here and we'll start to tidy this place up and get it ready to go for sale as soon as possible. I agree. There's no sense in prolonging the inevitable. Well, I'm going to start in the bedroom. All right, I'll give you a hand. Mike, this is just for my information only, but if we were to dig your dad's body back up again, is it too late to do an autopsy? <laughs> no, you know, in most circumstances, that's still possible, yeah? Mm, really? Yeah, only in dad's case, he was cremated. <laughs> yes, I forgot. Not that we would ever do that, of course. <gasps> Still, pity. <laughs> See, it's just what I said. This old window never did lock properly. It's okay. Great, okay. You go around to the front door. I'm gonna climb in here. Ah, damn! Oh, ouch! Oh! Uh, Margaret, what are you doing? I'm coming in no, after you. No! Ah! For God's sakes, Margaret! I'll have you know, I'm just as capable uh, of climbing uh, in uh, as you are. Stop it, Margaret! You're Stop strangling me! me. Move out the way! I can't move out of the way! For God! <laughs> how'd, you, how'd you get in? The front door was unlocked. <laughs> I think 
you did land in something, Margaret. <laughs> Turn out the lights, Karen. You bring them up. I'm not leaving. Not yet, anyway. Well, you can't stay here, Mom. I am not. I still own the place, you know. I'm going to stay here the night, and this, tomorrow morning I'll get a cab and go back to the home. But what about. No, 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 no. It's okay. <coughs> I'll stay here with her. You come back tomorrow morning and pick us up. No. Oh, no. If, if you're staying here, then I'm staying too. <laughs> And what about me? Because I'm certainly not staying here. Well, you can take the car and come back tomorrow morning after your class. Pick us up. Go out there? Alone? There's creatures out there? Oh! You are so unbelievably selfish. You know how I am about nighttime driving. Stay here then! Stay here? In this mausoleum? I hate this place. And the worst thing is, Every time I think it's my last time here, I find I'm back again. <laughs> it's haunting me. It, it's beckoning me. It's the Twilight Zone. Amateurville House has nothing on the Matthews family farm. 